In this Coffee Talk, Pastor Pascal Williams, our discipleship pastor, and Pastor Ken Chapman, our children's and youth pastor, discuss what boundaries look like in spiritual leadership. All right, Pascal, my turn to ask you a question. Let me grab a card here. Ooh, okay. What do boundaries look like in spiritual leadership? Mm, boundaries. Well, first of all, when I think about boundaries, I think of a healthy barrier. It lets you know what to say yes to and what to say no to. Um, I think the purpose of a boundary in any relationship is to protect you and the other person. So I think in a family, there needs to be clarity about what those boundaries are. And I think there are challenges when the, uh, the individuals that you're in a relationship with, the family, the spouse, the children, when they don't share the same boundaries. Mm. So communicating what those boundaries are and knowing what they are will always help. Because if for you a boundary is over here and for me it's over there, I'm going to cross the line. And so I think God um, tells us what some of those boundaries are. And all boundaries exist, especially from a good and a wonderful God. The boundaries exist because he knows what's best, right? So a husband um, honoring the wife. I mean, the Bible even talks about that when a husband is not honoring his wife, his prayers are not going to be answered. Mm. Imagine that. I think it's found in 1 Peter chapter 3. I can't remember exactly. But so um, when I say boundaries, I'm thinking of it in a positive as well as a negative. So crossing boundaries that God clearly says, do not, do not, do not. It's kind of mm. like the GPS. You know, as you, as you approach that boundary, I, you know, the Holy Spirit starts shouting, turn right, turn right, turn right, or you're going to crash. Yeah. Usually you don't hear you're going to crash part. And if you don't, then, you know, then you've got to take the U-turn and there could be some consequences. And I think all of us, you know, are challenged from time to time. And I think in families, we all have stress. Mm. You know, um, husband works hard, comes home and feels like, you know, I need to be taken care of. Honey, where are you, kids? You know, I'm going to sit on the couch. I'm going to watch a football game, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, wife comes and says, hey, honey, you know, I worked hard today, whatever that was, whether she works in the home, outside the home. Uh, I need help, too. I need care. The kids say I need homework. You know, we have children. Yes. I mean, my children are older, but they pretty much demanded and created the schedule mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have unique needs depending on the season of life. But boundaries, I think, are good things. Mm. But once again, I think for me, it's more about, first of all, communicating what they are. First of all, finding what the Bible says. What mm. does God say in his word about boundaries? Agreeing together, looking at the word of God together as a family so that when a person is getting closer and closer, everyone knows why that is there and why we don't do it. So mm. communication, I think, is also... Um, an effective way to help create the boundaries and maintain the boundaries. And occasionally, boundaries have to change, sure. right? So as children get older, right? My children are uh, late 20s, early 30s. When they were younger, depending on the age, there were certain things that they were able to do, and there were things that they were not able to do. As they got older, they were able to do more. But you know how children are. I know, mm. you know you've got youngins. Uh, they want to always cross the boundaries, sure. right? And I think also what's also important is to be consistent in enforcing the boundaries. Mm. Parents sometimes, you know, we're tired and, you know, we want to be loved and we don't want to have to deal with it anymore. But being consistent, and I think that is a big mistake that I've seen in families, and I've made the mistakes myself, is when you keep shifting the boundaries. Mm. Because inconsistency. Inconsistency. Yeah. So if everybody knows what the boundaries are and they're clear and they're healthy, and we're talking about rigidity where we can't be pliable, then what happens is I can, you know, I can scream today and I can have a, you know, get an emotional, have an emotional situation, and then I, I know I'm going to manipulate you. Mm. And then you're going to say, okay, honey, you know, whatever. Mm. But uh, when the boundaries are clear and everybody knows what they are, it's kind of like playing sports, you know, this is a, this is a flag. Everybody knows it's a flag, you know? Every, there's a referee there that says you have crossed the line or you have done something that violates what we all agreed to. Mm. So communicating boundaries, enforcing the boundaries, being consistent with the boundaries as um, 
are all things I think for a healthy family. Sure. So what advice would you give to a family or a couple or even a single parent who are coming into this uh, kind of a Christian ideal of setting boundaries and understanding rules and building things by the, what the Bible says. What advice would you give some uh, a family member, or, again, parents who are new to this? Right. They have a kind of a family unit going forward, mm -hmm. but they haven't lived like this. The kids are kind of running wild and doing their thing and they want to kind of bring that together. What advice would you give them how to, how to accomplish that? Mm. Well, begin at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, it doesn't have to be very complicated. I think what, what is helpful is for the decision makers, the, the parents, to sit down and say, where are we experiencing the greatest crisis or the greatest challenge in our family? Um, and just looking at that, honestly, and if necessarily, getting advice from uh, another a parents who have children and are in the same age or those that are more mature, mm. because wisdom is the principal thing, right? So. Wisdom is the ability to discern and make the decisions that are best for the situation at hand. Mm. So sometimes when you don't know where to begin, you need to help have somebody come and help you. So sitting down with uh, a wise person usually is a wise thing to do. Um, and then making it you know, very practical. As, as I said earlier, being clear on communicating with the team. Everybody in the family needs to know what the boundaries are. And then holding each other accountable, okay? And that's gonna be the hardest thing because we just like to, like I said, keep, you know, Adam and Eve, right? I mean, they crossed the boundary. There's something in us, in our nature, to want to break the rules. Sure. So each, holding each other accountable and um, communicating them is, is, is the way, I think, to, to do it practically and easily. Sure, and talk with you, Wood, about, um uh, kind of crossing boundaries. Uh -huh. So we've now established the rules and the uh, kind of the um, the way that we're gonna we're gonna do this thing, right? We've got this we've got this game plan. We're gonna kind of use the sports reference. Okay. We're gonna move forward with this plan. And now we have a family member, could be a child, could be a, a, a spouse, a mom or dad, who kind of intentionally deviate. Whether for whatever reason that people yeah. break the rules, you kind of had on Adam and Eve. It's a kind of rebellion is in yeah. humans, right? So how do we correct that? Mm -hmm. How do we rein that in? Um, and what does a consequence look like right. for that? Okay. Well, when the leaders themselves are breaking the boundaries and the children are observing it, we've got problems. We're mm. going to have big challenges. So if the, if the people or the, the, the individuals who hold the key, okay, are themselves inconsistent all the time, you're going to have a dysfunctional family. You cannot work without boundaries. Boundaries are healthy things that every human needs need to have. They help us to know which direction we're going. Like I said, when to say yes, yes when to say no. So if both spouses are breaking boundaries and the children, you're going to have children that are um, not gonna follow the law. You're gonna have children that are going to experiment with everything out there. Mm -hmm. There's just no, they, they lose direction. They're gonna get lost in some sense. And just, you know, to be able to bring them in will require the grace of God and, you know, a lot of love and discipline. Um, if one spouse keeps breaking the, the law, if I, when I say the law, let me just say, cr keeps crossing boundaries, the other spouse needs to do their best to lovingly um, pray <laughs> so that the other spouse can see what they're doing mm. and then help them to reestablish what they are. Because remember, if there's no agreement, you can't play the game. Mm, that's good. You can't play the game. You can't play basketball, playing you know, football rules and you know, switching yeah. it up to you know, lacrosse rules. Mm. Everyone needs to know what the boundaries are up front and then they have to stick to the rules. That's great. So to take it real quick to kind of a wider context. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk it kind of more broadly and, and culturally. Yes. So we live in a culture now that seems to see the natural boundaries mm -hmm. that we've established and to kind of be willingly ready to step mm -hmm. over them and sometimes run through them. Mm -hmm. So what do we uh, tell kind of young Christian families or even mm -hmm. those of us that have been doing it for a while when we see these boundaries and, and kind of things being broken all around us and then legally legislated to make it okay to break these rules or overstep these kind of laws that God has established, how should we as Christians approach right. that? And, and, and what's the best way to kind of right. uh, navigate that with our families? Yeah, you know, everything that we are to do, the Bible uses the word love, right? Love is the 
the quality substance in everything that we do. So if you, we are talking about boundaries, but there's no sense of love and care communicated with it, then it's going to feel like it's rigid. I'm going to feel like you're a dictator. You're going to be legalistic. But if, a, if there is love and care, I'm talking about genuine, authentic care. If, if the spouse feels that way, um, if you know that about God, if the children feel that the parents are doing it because of the love issue, that they, they love me, they care about me, there's more of a willingness because it's all about the attitude of the heart. People are, you know, God wants us to, quote, obey him, mm. but obedience without love is just doing it with a bad attitude, and God is like, your heart's not in it. So there has to be a heart. There has to be a, a sense of this is good for us. This is because I love you. And I think another very important thing is, is to, especially when it comes to children, one of the things I, I, I did quite a bit and not, didn't, didn't do it perfectly, is to show my children the consequences of a bad decision. Mm. Because sometimes we can verbalize it, but if they see it and, again, experience it or observe it, and they see, okay, this always leads to that, then there's going to be a sense of here's why. Okay, so it's not just like doing it blindly. There's an understanding that comes with it. Mm. And when it's, when, when it's communicated again with I love you, I care about you, this is the why, then we work together and it's a healthy family. That's great. Understanding the boundaries in love and doing it that Andrew way. Love with love. Love Absolutely with everything. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Now i got to fix some boundaries with my kids, but that's good. Go. <laughs>